So, you have some old fountain pens sitting in a drawer somewhere, and you maybe messed around with them at some point, but it's probably been a little while, and you're not quite feeling up to speed. Well, my goal in this video is to give you the confidence to pull out those old fountain pens, get them writing again, maybe even help you identify what's different about fountain pens now and what you might be interested in acquiring to get that fountain pen passion burning again like it once was. I am Brian Goulet of GouletPens.com, and since 2009, I've been selling modern fountain pen products, and I've made some 2,000 videos on fountain pens and their use, with a focus on newer fountain pen users. But one thing I've heard continually over the years is that there are many of you who aren't exactly new to fountain pens, but you aren't exactly current on them either. You're sort of in between a newbie and a veteran pen user. Well, I think that's awesome, and I think I can give you some pointers to help you get your bearings and find a great place to latch onto in the fountain pen hobby pretty quickly. My first couple of tips are gonna be specific to you if you have old pens laying around, which you're trying to use again, which will be a little more focused on cleaning and repairing vintage pens. If you're not in that situation, you can go ahead and skip to tip number three if you'd like. We have timestamps down in the description. First thing is to figure out what you have. Open up those desk drawers, gather all the fountain pens you have lying in any old purses or bags or backpacks or some trunk in the attic. Find that nice paper if you have any and just get it all in one place and see what you've got. You're gonna need to go through and figure out which brands, which models you have, if that's possible. You may need to maybe ask some friends or relative of yours, especially if it's somebody who used the pens once or maybe they're the ones that gave it to you. They might be able to point you maybe to the retailer that they bought it at or uh, you know, they might have some information about why they purchased it and which model it was. That's gonna help you a lot in some of the next steps of the process. If you have vintage pens, much older, 20 years plus, I recommend you check out Richard Binder's website at richardpens.com, no affiliation. Um, it's just a wealth of information on pen history, terminology, and identifying vintage pens. Tip number two, clean up and repair. This is gonna be probably the toughest part of this whole process and is where most people get discouraged when getting back into fountain pens. Often you'll have ink that's been left in the pens that have dried out, and that's gonna take some work to remove. An ammonia-based cleaner like our Goulet Pen Flush will go a long way in helping you out here if that's the case, as that's what pen flush is pretty much made for. Any dried ink left in the pen has to be cleaned out to allow new ink to flow properly. And that might take anywhere from overnight to a week or more of soaking, flushing, and flushing some more to get it all clean. Stick with it though. If you're still seeing some color come out as you're flushing the pen with water, then it's still working out that old ink and you just gotta keep it up until it's all clear. Now there's a chance that the cleaning needed will be deeper than what you can or are willing to do, or there might be some damage due to the age or the condition of the pen. This is going to be probably outside of your capabilities at this point. And honestly, it would be outside of most pen users' capabilities. So you'll wanna probably find a specialist, someone who repairs old fountain pens. Now I don't have any affiliation with any repair people, we don't do it at Goulet Pens, but Penteeks.com is one site that has been the one that I've heard the most about before. If you have vintage pens, uh, it's a good site to check out. Now there are a number of enthusiasts too who focus on repairing specific models that have a loyal fan base around them like Parker's and Estabrook's. So you might be able to track down someone who specializes in parts and repairs for these specific pens that were particularly popular at various points in history. Tip number three, get familiar with the process of using fountain pens again. Now I have some great resources, although admittedly maybe a little dated, in our Fountain Pen 101 series. There's a number of videos, articles, and other information online for using fountain pens. What'll be key for you to understand, though, is the process of inking up, writing with, and cleaning the specific pen that you're using. You're gonna need three things to write with a fountain pen. You'll need the fountain pen, <laughs> fountain pen ink, and paper for the pen. Make sure that you're starting with a pen that you know is going to work properly and make sure that you're comfortable with how it fills, how to hold it and how to clean it because all these are gonna be essential in your ongoing use. You can essentially consider yourself a newbie at this stage, though depending on how much experience you had previously, you might remember more about using pens and get up to speed much quicker than a true newbie would. 
Restoring a vintage fountain pen can be a bit of an involved experience, depending on what you're dealing with. But I think it's an exciting one if you have pens that are of any sentimental value. However, if you're just getting back into them, I might urge you to consider getting some reliable, inexpensive pens, some new ones, to try out as you're getting the process of inking, writing, and cleaning down without the added pressure or confusion of using a sentimental vintage pen if you're not even sure that it's working properly. Watch either of my videos on fountain pens for newbies for some specific recommendations of models to try out if you're looking for new pens. Ink. Vintage ink doesn't usually fare as well as vintage pens. While a pen can last decades, ink can be a little more questionable and can give you more frustration than it's worth when you're trying to get back into the hobby. I highly recommend getting some new fresh fountain pen ink so that you know that your ink isn't gonna be the issue should you run into any type of troubleshooting. Old ink can be used if it's been stored for a long time, but that's gonna be something that's more fun to play around with once you feel more comfortable regularly using fountain pens again. Plus, honestly, there's a boatload of cool new ink that's come out even in the last five or 10 years. So it'll fuel inject your excitement for writing with fountain pens again when you see some of these cool inks that you can use now. Now, as far as paper, you honestly don't have to write with any particular paper, but just understand at this stage that paper can vary quite a bit and it has a greater impact on performance and enjoyment of fountain pens than probably most people realize. If you're already picking up some ink or pens anyway, throw in a pad of Rhodia paper and you'll know that you're getting a great foundation for your reintroduction. And you can at least use that paper to compare other papers that you might be using. Tip number four, pick one to three pens to use and maybe stick with those for a while. Once you get yourself functional with fountain pens again, you're likely to get pretty excited, which is not a bad thing. And you may wanna fall deep down that rabbit hole. And while I certainly love to do this, I can't judge anyone else who goes overboard quickly. There's something to be said for keeping things minimal, at least while you're starting things off in the beginning. By getting more familiar with a few pens at first, you're keeping your variables down, which gives you less to have to troubleshoot should you run into any issues. I think there can definitely be a temptation to chase a new pen or ink or something that you're hoping to gain before you've really learned to use what you have. So just keep that in mind and pace yourself. Just enjoy the journey. Tip number five, check for ink and clean it regularly. Now this might sound a little bit obvious, but you'd be surprised how often people forget to do things like check if there's ink in the pen or cleaning it out maybe ever when just getting back into fountain pens. It's not something that you've been in the habit of doing with ball points and roller balls. And in fact, you might even have a habit of just mashing down and swirling around the tip of the pen when it's kind of drying up because that's how most paste and gel pens work. Doing that can ruin your fountain pen nib. So if it's not writing, the first thing you do is to check if there's ink in the pen. If it has ink in it, then think about when you maybe last cleaned the pen. Cleaning every two to four weeks or every time you change ink colors is a good general practice. But basically anytime you have flow issues, Cleaning the pen is always the go-to thing. Just think about it like you're rebooting some electronic device. It's just good to do as a practice if ever something isn't working right. Tip number six, set aside some time to play and practice. Once you have a good process down for using your pen and you feel comfortable with it, try to make some regular time to use them. And one common thing I hear about from people who make excuses about why they shouldn't use a fountain pen is that they feel that they don't have good handwriting. And maybe your handwriting sucks. Mine's not fantastic, but it used to be a lot worse. But you know what helps? Handwriting more, especially with pens that you like and you're excited about. So making some time to practice, and I literally just mean writing intentionally with your pens in any way, you'd be surprised how much that it can help your handwriting and thus your enjoyment. You can practice cursive or a fancy script if you really want, but honestly, just writing on a regular basis will improve your handwriting and get you more familiar with your pens. If you're comfortable carrying your pens with you and using them at work or at school, great, but you can also just have it on a desk set up at home or a table or something and just pick them up 
whenever you get the chance. Tip number seven, reach out to others for help as you need it. Using fountain pens is an incredibly rewarding and rather deep hobby if you want it to be. After having invested easily 10,000 plus hours with fountain pens myself, I can pretty confidently say there's a lifetime of enjoyment available to any fountain pen enthusiast using them as a part of their regular life. What was honestly the number one thing that attracted me to the hobby was the passion around them and the people who are enthusiastic about using fountain pens. There's a learning curve for everyone and we've all felt lost at times and been helped by others in the pen community in one way or another. So don't hesitate to reach out if you get stuck. You can obviously find a lot of content and pen friends on social channels like in YouTube, in our comments, on Goulet Pens videos, our Goulet Nation private Facebook group is great, Instagram, there's all kinds of great places you can find pen people. They're generally quite friendly and very enthusiastic and you'll find that there's a lot of willingness to share experience in the pen community. And you can certainly reach out to the Goulet Pens customer care team. We are always happy to help, though I will say repair and vintage pens is not our specific expertise, but we're always happy to at least help guide you in the right direction. So I hope that this has been helpful to all of you out there who have felt that tug to pick up some old pens that you've neglected for a while, or maybe given you the confidence to try writing with a fountain pen again if you used them decades ago and haven't really thought about them in a while. I can assure you that you're in good company and that when it comes to using fountain pens, the journey is the reward. If my team and I at Goulet Pens can be of any help to you, check out gouletpens.com and reach out or just cruise around on our YouTube channel and soak in some of the multitude of videos that we've made for you while you've been on your fountain pen hiatus. I hope to welcome you back to the hobby and as I always like to say, right on.